Wow, that's crazy. I think it's fair to say it's not shooting good. Howdy there folks and welcome to Bolts for Bucks. My name's Steven Bresna and today we're gonna go over this exciting new offering from Bergara, the Bergara Ridge Carbon Wilderness. This is the latest offering in a bolt action rifle that they have produced for those backcountry hunters. It's essentially a Bergara Wilderness Ridge, but with a carbon fiber wrapped, wrapped barrel. And this is a number six contour carbon fiber wrapped barrel. And I gotta say, it's the lightest contour or the most narrowest diameter carbon fiber wrapped barrel I've ever used. These come in at a starting weight of 6.4 pounds and go up from there. And then they have a sub MOA guarantee, meaning that you should be able to shoot a sub one inch group at 100 yards using factory premium ammunition. Later in this video, we'll be taking it out to the range and testing it, putting it through the paces, and we're gonna show the good, the bad, and the ugly. And yes, there actually is some ugly, so you'll wanna stay tuned for that. The receiver on this is utilizes a Remington 700 footprint and Remington 700 scope bases. It's Cerakoted with sniper gray Cerakote, so it's rust corrosion uh, resistant, which is very nice if you're going somewhere like Alaska to hunt. The carbon fiber wrapped barrel on this rifle comes with a 410 stainless steel shank and it's threaded with a 5 8 by 24 thread pitch at the end and features an omni radial brake here. That is also Sarah. It comes in 20, 22, and 24 inches. The action on this is super smooth, reminiscent of a Sako. It has a two lug bolt design, it has a sliding plate extractor, a plunger ejector, and a coned bolt nose and breech. It comes with a hinged floor plate and real metal bottom metal, which is nice to see. It has a three uh, round capacity in the Magnum calibers and I believe four in the short action calibers it's available in. It features a cocked indicator at the rear here with a little red paint, has a left-sided bolt release right here. And then it features a very nice proprietary trigger that's adjustable. It's a single stage trigger and it breaks very crisp and very clean. It has a curved trigger blade and a two position safety. When on safe, it does not lock the bolt in safe. It does feature a threaded on a large tactical knurled bolt knob that's made of aluminum. It's available in 6.5 PRC, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308 Winchester, 300 wind mag, and soon to come 7 PRC. In the Magnum calibers, it comes with a barrel that's 24 inches long. Short action calibers, 22 inches long, except for the 308. The 308 is available with a 20 inch barrel. The weight on the 6.5 PRC is 6.6 .6 pounds. This is a 300 wind mag, and this weighs 6.7 pounds. But basically, you're gonna see a weight anywhere from 6.4 to 6.7 pounds. Twist weight on the 6.5 caliber, the twist rate for the barrel on the 6.5 caliber offerings is one in eight. For the 30 caliber, it's one in 10. And for the seven PRC, it's one in eight. The 300 wind mag that I have here has an overall length of 44 inches. Right before we take this to the range, let's go over some of the fit, feel, and finish of this rifle. Comes with a nice about one inch thick rubber recoil pad, medium stiff, got a sling swivel stud here in the bottom, soft touch rubberized finish here so it's real grippy has cool little paint job on it with some splatters uh, pretty traditional comb on it as well as a pretty traditional grip knurled for easy gripping though with some checkering relatively slim neck right here and then um, coming forward you have a fully free floated barrel i'd say medium contour grip on the forend pretty traditional feeling, a little bit, you know, more beefy than say a Ruger American. Uh, easy to grab, also has checker checkering for easy grip. And then it has a sling swivel stud at the front. The stock does feature metal pillar bedding, but it's not glass bedded and it doesn't have an aluminum bedding block in it. And this is fiber reinforced polymer. So it does have a little bit of flex. Um, but it is definitely a lot stiffer than say Ruger American, but maybe not quite as stiff as a Tika T3X factory stock. It also features a 90 degree bolt throw. It has a polished bolt body that has spiral fluting and it's extremely smooth. 
All right, let's take this range and see how it performs. Wow, that's crazy. I think it's fair to say it's not shooting good. <laughs> All right, so now that we're back from the range, well, let's go over some of the results and my opinions. Um, first off, pretty disappointed. I really am. I got to say, I expected better from this rifle. I purchased this. This was not given to me as a sample from the company. Um, it does feed very, very well. It does eject and extract very, very well. It is extremely smooth and the trigger feels fantastic. But I must have tried anywhere from, I think, uh, no, probably five to seven different factory ammunitions, anything from cheap fusion ammunition all the way up to very expensive, super high-end mead ammunition, and really, really found this rifle to be not only extremely picky, but difficult to shoot MOA, let alone sub MOA. I took this on three different range trips and spent probably about 16 to 20 hours working on trying to not only get this to shoot well, but figure out if there was any issues. I swapped out the scopes, swapped out the rings, swapped out the base, checked everything like 16 times, not 16, but like six times, and none of that turned out to really be the issue. It's just a picky gun and to be honest not very accurate i did find that my best results were mostly with actually the very cheap fusion ammunition um and the sig sauer 190 otm uh premium ammunition so basically the only ammunition that would even shoot maybe sub moa 50 percent of the time was the Sig Sauer uh, 190 grain uh, ammunition. Like I said, three different range, trip, range trips, and it wasn't even until I think the second range trip and probably 60 rounds down the barrel that I even got a sub MOA group. In my opinion, it's due to the extremely light profile carbon fiber wrapped barrel. Like I said before, this is probably the thinnest carbon fiber wrapped barrel I've ever seen. And while it looks beautiful, I find that uh, with three shots shot relatively uh, consecutively, there's almost always a major flyer. And now you might be like, well, that's human error. Well, yeah, some days I shoot bad, some I shoot good, some I shoot in between. But here's the thing, three range trips, 16 to 20 hours with it. And I was shooting other rifles that were very light, carbon fiber wrapped barrels in 300 PRC and shooting half MOA, quarter MOA, MOA, sub MOA, relatively consistently with all the other rifle systems I was using, yet still struggling with this one on the same day. Now, they did send me data on like, I think it was uh, maybe five different groups. They were all sub MOA in testing with the Sig Sauer ammunition, but I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. I checked the torque specs. I did them to exactly to their torque specifications, checked them multiple times. Um, that made no improvement. Uh, like I said, I went over the rifle, I cleaned the rifle, I did everything I could. In the real world, with my results, I'm not seeing 
the results they saw in their testing. Um, I don't know if they're letting it cool longer between shots within a group or longer between groups. I did let it cool on several occasions for great lengths between groups um, to see if that would help and it didn't improve things much. So would this work as a backcountry hunting rifle? Yes, because really the first shot is the only one that should matter, right? But I can't in good faith recommend it at this point. Thanks for watching Bullets for Bucks. Check out this next video and subscribe.